Hi, I'm Anna Whitehouse from Mother Pucker and I founded Flex Appeal, which is a campaign to fight for flexible working for everyone from knackered mums to professional rugby players. And ahead of International Women's Day, I'm joined by the Red Roses. And I have to say, <laughs> before we get into this, I used to play rugby and I don't want to make a big deal out of it or anything, but uh, wouldn't want to take you on. <laughs> <laughs> How did you guys start playing? So my brother played when um, he was younger and I was also dragged along to his training sessions and his games. I joined in and got into my own team with the boys and started ever since. Was there any resistance as you sort of grew up playing rugby? I think because my dad and my brother played, I don't think there was. And because my mum had always gone to watch my dad, yeah. um, there was no like restriction sort of thing. And I think my brother had a couple of girls in his team when he was like playing. So I think she saw it and I think she saw how like Keen, I was just to do everything, and if my brother was doing something, I wanted to do it too. What would you say to your five-year-old self, your 14-year-old self? I think just give it a go, like, you'll surprise yourself. I think that's what happens with a lot of people, and especially with the sport of rugby, there's so many different roles. Don't wait for the perfect moment. I think sometimes in life, like, things come up, but there's always a what if. If rugby's there, just go and give it a go, and then you'll find out either way if it was the right decision or not. Tell me about that moment when you started playing for England, like, just the feeling around that. Mine was out in Canada, so I didn't, like, have any family there. Mm. So I think for me it was, like, the anthem. This is happening now, like, I'm going to bow out the anthem as loud as I can. <laughs> it was an amazing experience. When I was Googling women's rugby, the first Google search term that came up, it said, are women allowed to play rugby? Mm. <laughs> How do you feel about that, allowed? Oh, we get all sorts of questions, yeah. like, Oh, do you tackle properly? Like, um, do you lift a line out? Like, do you play on the same size pitch, same size ball? Like, all the same standard questions, yeah. <laughs> and what's the most frustrating thing that you've each been asked, maybe in relation to women's rugby? Yeah. I always get, you don't look like you play rugby. Like, what do rugby players look like? Um, even travelling to a Premiership game the other day, a guy stopped and said, what do you play? I was like, rugby, well, you don't look like a rugby player. You never know which way to take that question yeah. either. It's like, is that a compliment or yeah. you putting us all in I a also, box? I feel or... insulted. A lot of people are just a bit a bit, bit uneducated about it yeah. because they just think women's rugby and they haven't never actually seen a game and they just have this imagination of what it's going to be like. Yeah. But anyone that's actually, or that I've spoken to that's actually seen a game, they come off back here going, oh my God, that was, that was yeah. amazing. Yeah. Didn't expect it to be like that. It was, it was fantastic. And... I think as well, we, we tend to play a different style to men's rugby. It's a bit more free flow and it's a bit more keeping the ball in hand. So it's actually a, a different kind of game as well and a different spectacle and lots of people seem to enjoy it. In terms of uh, how you feel about your body, your confidence, uh, has that changed as you've played rugby? I really appreciate my body for what it can do in terms of like my strength, my power and I think actually that makes me so much more confident like throughout like rugby but out also outside of that as well. I want to be like the best I can be in order to perform best out on the pitch and I think young girls should not even worry about like what they look like. I think they need to go and do like what they need to do to be able to, if they want to play rugby, go out and play to the best that they can. What would you say has been the toughest bit of getting to where you are now? I think injury setbacks is probably my, my toughest one. Um, yeah, I've had a few and it's always that question in the back of your head, can I do this again? Or, but you get really good at rehab, you get really good <laughs> at going to the gym soda and working on all the little bits. Um, but especially over the last couple of years, I've realised that you can't do it alone. Um, and it's really important to kind of talk and it's not a sign of weakness, but it's actually quite strong to be like, I'm actually not okay. And the high, biggest moment today, this is going to my kid, who's looking to you as role models. No pressure. I think one of the best things for me was we won a um, Six Nations Grand Slam in Ireland on St. Patrick's Day. I just thought that was just a big, <laughs> big one. Um, it's given us everything. You know, we've been able to travel the world, see some fantastic places. We, we get to live the dream day in, day out. To get to playing at uh, England level, uh, I imagine you had to have jobs alongside to make it work. I was really lucky in terms of like I had employers that were, you know, supportive of, of my rugby career. What and did you do? I taught um, predominantly early years, so reception aged children or nursery aged children. I was supported by them when I needed time off, you know, I was able to go, but 
it was hard at times, like early mornings, late nights, and I eventually decided to go part-time teaching just so I had those extra days to be able to focus a bit more on rugby. I think organisation was key, making sure that you had everything planned out. Well, you're kind of. of teaching now by showing the, kid, the kids. Yeah, I guess so, uh, yeah. What, you know, that they can do anything be anything yeah think, absolutely um, regardless of gender in terms of getting women in sport like how important is it like why do you really feel that it's not just about turning up on the pitch but actually amplifying what you're doing get getting people into the stadium to watch like spreading the word of who you are and what you do um, to my little girls I think the good thing about us is that we're really accessible like you know like Lark said we we're not just about what we are on the field. You know, we've got our off-field personalities. We're quite up to date with our social media. We actually take the time to go and speak to people and thank them for coming and being like, did you enjoy it? And actually asking if they play. That's really nice to know and like see and then just give it back to them. I think yeah. it's really important. And you are, like I said earlier, your role models. And um, that's not to be taken lightly in all honesty, because things are changing. The game is changing. Women's sport is changing. How do you feel about that? pressure? I think week in week out we want to be the best we can be and being a role model kind of just becomes part of that. I lived in New Zealand when I was younger and um, the England girls came on tour to New Zealand and I got this ball signed by loads of them and I remember one of them was, um, she was not play but Emily Braun um, called Giant Lady and I remember her getting Beside my ball, and then like one of my first like England camps, she was my roommate, and I was like, <laughs> "This is so weird." And I was like, "I like, have to tell you just to get it out of the way." But like, you signed my ball for me, once, and it was really nice. I'll never meet your heroes, yeah. or do, you? or just yeah. like share a room with them. Yeah, and then she became my roommate for ages. So it was like so weird going through that transition of being a fan that was almost too scared to ask someone to sign the ball, and then it's like now we're roommates. Scared. Right, Anna, since you wanted my shirt earlier, we've actually got something for you. It's not quite the number two, because you've got to earn that one, because it's special. We've got this right. lovely shirt for you. Thanks. There you are. <laughs> Anna, and a ball that we've all signed for you as well, so hopefully you can give these to your daughters, and we'll see them in an English shirt soon enough. She's called Danger Mouse, so you've got to watch out. She's only two, but... That's <laughs> an incredible rugby nickname. Yeah, that is. Watch out for Danger Mouse. Yeah, yeah no doubt, yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys.